sermon text will be in Ephesians 5, 25, and 26. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the, the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of waters by the word. We'll have a, a prayer for him. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day today. I pray that you'll g give Brother TJ power to speak and that he'll have very good words to say and that we'll all have ears to hear and that we'll have a good day today. And in Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, <clears throat> the church will not fail. <clears throat> Come short, be overcome, or be conquered. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. <clears throat> the church will be found a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing holy and without blemish. Now I can say this with confidence and tell you this right now because my text says this, Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it. In our day, there are a lot of false perceptions concerning the church. People will say things like, the church just isn't what it's supposed to be, or, or just, it's just not doing enough. Or I've heard from the pulpit preachers say things like, if Christ came back, he'd be disappointed in the way his church looks. <clears throat> now I say that this is, these are words of ignorant men who don't know of the work of Christ and don't know Christ. Because when Christ puts his hand to a work, it will not fail or come short. So when Christ says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, when he's going to prevent, uh, provide for himself this, this glorious church, it's going to be without spot and blemish, or any such thing. It's, it's going to be a glorious church. <clears throat> so I want to declare to you today <clears throat> that Christ will present himself with a glorious church. <clears throat> now Christ was motivated by his love for the church, initiated by the giving of himself, and completed by the sanctification and cleansing of the washing of water and by the word. <clears throat> From the beginning to giving himself to the end when the church will stand, a glorious church, Christ has loved his church <clears throat> and was fully involved in this work. <clears throat> now knowing that Christ loved his church, this is a great source of confidence I find great assurance in this, in this, in comfort, knowing that Christ loved his church. Because when we know that Christ loves his church, he's going to put all his resources into this. He's not going to abandon this work. He's not going to turn from it or neglect it or let it come short. <clears throat> he's going he's gonna to give it all he has because he loves his church. <clears throat> he is fully involved in this work that he is doing. <clears throat> he loved the church so much that he actually gave himself. He gave himself for the church. <clears throat> this is a giving. It's a sacrifice. This is a giving up of something else that he... He actually purchased, and there was a transaction made. <clears throat> Christ is so involved in the church <clears throat> that a great part, I might even say that 
all of what Christ is doing right now is in preparation, is in the pre preparing of the church. See, all that we know of Christ's work right now, it's all, they're all things that Christ is doing in preparing his church and working in us. <clears throat> So in glory, he is seen as a lamb slain. <clears throat> this is an implication of a redemption, of a removal of sins. A lamb was provided, a sacrifice was made for sins. Christ, he is the apostle and high priest of our profession. He, is the, he nourishes and cherishes his church. <clears throat> Think it's going to fail? <laughs> Think he's going to be disappointed? <clears throat> he is the captain of our salvation. That means he's bringing, it, he's bringing this to the, to the finish line. He's going to see this through. <clears throat> he is the author and the finisher Amen. of our faith. <clears throat> Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is provided for you and for me. In him. <laughs> God speaks to us uh, through him, by him. He is the bread of life. He is the word of life. He is the giver of living water. <clears throat> we have great dependence upon him. In fact, you could say apart from him, <laughs> we could do nothing. <clears throat> he gave himself that he can be fully involved in this ministry. <clears throat> he is the head of the body. He's not just another, another member. He is the head. He's like in the preeminent position, in the prominent place. He is the head. First to all and second to none. First place <clears throat> in that highest position. One reason this is a prominent and most important place is because every other member of the body fully depends upon the head. <clears throat> Jesus is the one and the only one who occupies this position. <clears throat> And praise God for that because he is the only one who can fully fulfill this role. <clears throat> this is such a prominent and an important place that it requires a great amount of effort, energy, and sacrifice to fulfill. So I am convinced that Christ gave himself. He gave up himself for the church. <clears throat> Our sanctification and our cleansing uh, comes, it comes with a price. There is a cost. And he didn't just snap his fingers and all of a sudden standing before him is a glorious church, sanctified and cleansed. <clears throat> he gave himself to do this. Jesus is fully fully involved in this work. <clears throat> See, our involvement is us entering into this work. <clears throat> Just how involved? <clears throat> he purchased the church with his blood. How involved is he? He, <laughs> he poured out his blood <clears throat> and purchased the church with it. Do you not know that, that you're not your own? You have been bought with a price. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Redeemed with precious blood of Christ. <clears throat> he gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. <clears throat> According to the will of God and, of, and our Father. So he gave himself for our sins. Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. 
He's the one who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. <clears throat> now we are very, very aware of men's condition. Unrighteous, darkness, children of wrath, <clears throat> ungodly. We know that there's no fellowship between light and darkness. There's none. So how will God take this people and make for himself a people of his own possession? I say, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. <clears throat> Christ, he gave himself. <clears throat> now his death initiates this great work of sanctification. <clears throat> Now that he has given himself, sanctification uh, can be effective. <clears throat> now he gave himself when it, with anticipation and expectation that a glorious church will be presented on the other side. <clears throat> Now I want to talk about this church <clears throat> and just what, what is this process of sanctification that is, that is taking place. <clears throat> See, we're living in this time now where, where we have been sanctified and we're being sanctified. <clears throat> At this time, we're experiencing like a time where where living stones are being prepared to be framed into a wall. <clears throat> where a vine is being pruned. The branches are being pruned that, that, that these parts that are, that are stealing nourishment, that are not producing, or, or things that, that are getting in the way and preventing growth and fruit, those things are being cut off and separated and removed so that fruit can be bared. <clears throat> these, these preparations are painful. They're, it's a cutting away, it's a breaking away like a stone that is being framed uh, in a wall or, or the pruning of a branch. But these things are, pre are preparations for use and for a great benefit. <clears throat> now here's some evidence that a work is being worked and that men have entered into this work. Men are saving themselves from this untoward generation. They are keeping themselves unspotted by the world. They are zealous unto good works. They are counting their gains as loss for Christ, forsaking themselves, taking up their cross and following after Jesus. They are throwing off the deeds of the flesh, the old man, and mortifying the deeds of the body. They have crucified the flesh and the affections and lusts. The world is crucified unto them, and they unto the world. <clears throat> they are walking by the Spirit, being led by the Spirit. They are pre uh, pressing in. They're fighting the good fight. They're keeping the faith. <clears throat> they are not moved. And they walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. They don't just do these things, but they increase in them as they're being sanctified. <clears throat> so why are they no longer unrighteous, fornicators, idolaters, adulteresses, Iphamites, <clears throat> abusers, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, <clears throat> revilers, and extortioners, they are washed. They are sanctified. They are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now in sanctification, <clears throat> uh, it's implied that there's separation. <clears throat> our sin is separated from us. Christ has 
delivered and is delivering us from this present evil world. Like there's a separation from this present evil world. Once we gave in and we were, uh, we were children of this world, but now there's a separation being delivered from it, taken out. <clears throat> we are made dead to sin. <laughs> dead to it. That's, you're, you're no longer alive to it. You're dead to it. <clears throat> the deeds of the flesh, they're no longer allowed in my life. Right? No longer. It's a cutting off. It's a delivering from. It's a separation. But at the same time, in sanctification, there's also like, it's implied that there's reconciliation. <clears throat> like, that is at the same time these separations take place, we are brought nigh to God. <clears throat> As fellowship with the world ends, fellowship with God and other believers begin. <clears throat> so we are a people of God's own possession. His special people. <clears throat> and in sanctification, we are set apart from the world, from sin, but yet set apart for God's use. <clears throat> Those who are sanctified are the people of God. The church is God's people. <clears throat> See, the word church means the called out. They're called out. They're, they're called, they're called out, and they're called to. <clears throat> These saints <clears throat> uh, are not one of many different kinds of people that God has in the world. <clears throat> I'll explain this uh, here, what I mean. <clears throat> These whom God has called out and as set apart <clears throat> are the entirety of God's people. The saints of God are the church. <clears throat> the peculiar people are the church. Uh, <clears throat> the strangers and pilgrims in this world, they are the church. <clears throat> God's people is the church. And the church is God's people. Like, it's that, it's that simple. Um, <clears throat> I think there are a lot of uh, overcomplicating, there's overcomplication of this in our day. <clears throat> people want to make the church something um, that it's not, and they don't want to recognize the church for what it is. <clears throat> These are God's holy people. These are the saints. <clears throat> who he has set apart for himself, for his own pleasure. These are the people who are in agreement. They're in agreement with God. <clears throat> and a people who are no longer in agreement with the world. They have been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. These are people who God has delivered from the power of darkness and has delivered, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. <clears throat> so we have been sanctified and set apart for God, for his use. <clears throat> the church is God's people. Not only did Christ give himself for the church to sanctify it, um, but he's also doing a work of cleansing, to cleanse it. <clears throat> in setting us apart from the world in sin and for God, he is also going to cleanse the church, cleanse these people. <clears throat> he took that which was filthy and made it clean. He took that which is useless and made it useful. <clears throat> so how will, how will Christ do this work of sanctifying and cleansing in his church? <clears throat> by the washing of water and by the word. 
As I was thinking about the washing of water, I couldn't think very far without thinking about like a new birth. <clears throat> Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. A man's nature cannot be sin or changed. A man's nature cannot be changed. Sin has defiled him. <clears throat> he has been corrupted. Death by sin has entered. You could say it like this. We were dead in trespasses and sins. Now everything that is dead, anything that is dead does not improve in that condition. There's no improving in death. <clears throat> this doesn't... This doesn't happen. You see, it must be. It has to be born again. <clears throat> this being born again is a part of sanctification and cleansing because <clears throat> this is the point in which a man is made dead to sin, being baptized into Christ's death. The old man is crucified. It is at this point that an individual is set apart from sin and the old man and is made alive unto God. <clears throat> it is at this point that a man is made clean. He is washed. Not by the putting away of filth from the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> what I'm saying in all of this is that is this washing of regeneration. <clears throat> it's washing. It's making a new creature. It's making new life and putting us into a new race. <clears throat> this washing and this this cleansing um, is also done by the word. <clears throat> As, as I was thinking about this, um, when, the, when the Lord speaks, when the Lord has a word, and the word comes out of his mouth, with that word comes power. <clears throat> it's living and active, and the result of God's word is activity. And so when the Lord speaks and says, let there be light, that's all it takes. And there's light. He speaks it. And so when the Lord speaks, it, what precedes that, what follows that is activity every time. And so when the sower casts his seed on the good soil, it's going to spring up into a, into a plant that will bear much fruit. <clears throat> so... So I say to, the, say to that that we have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, <clears throat> which liveth and abideth forever. <clears throat> I'm reminded of the valley of dry bones. When, I, when Ezekiel came to this valley, by, the Lord brought him, and he sees this great valley and all these, it's, there's no hope. They're not going to improve in that condition at all. But he said, hear the word of the Lord. And then what, what's the result? A great army. Alive. <clears throat> now, if the word of the Lord itself lives and abides forever, whatever that word pr produces, whatever, whatever that is conceived by that word will result in the same kind of life. <clears throat> and so we're, we're, we've been begun again of a living word that will live and abide forever. See, so the, the life that, that we have been, uh, been gotten of, we have been born again of a living word. <clears throat> it is, this is a, this is truly a marvelous life that has been produced. 
Now, not only does this word initiate the life, like come into our hearts and, and, and falls on good soil and, and springing up from that is new life, but it also um, continues to keep this vessel alive. <clears throat> the word has a prominent place in our sanctification um, because we believe the word that was spoken. We believe the word that was spoken to us. <clears throat> we don't have sight. We don't have sight like the principalities and the powers. We believe a word that is spoken. <clears throat> and we have this, um, all we have is this word from the Lord. <clears throat> Those who hear the word and believe it and obey it are those who are being saved. In one way, God is saving us by words. That's how he's saving us, by words. We, we have this great hope that, we, that we, we lay hold of because a word was spoken. We believed it, and we're continuing in it. From the beginning, life was uh, conceived in us by his word born of incorruptible seed, um, to the end, uh, we hinge our hope on his promises and cleanse those things which the word convicts us of. <clears throat> the word is living and active. It's quick and powerful. It's sharper than any, than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, or <clears throat> and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. From the first time the word was spoken <clears throat> to this day, it continues to work in this way, to pierce to the heart. <clears throat> From, you remember on the day of Pentecost, the word was spoken, the gospel was preached, and men were pierced to the heart. I still experience this piercing to the heart this cleansing ability of the word. <clears throat> so it convinces me to the need to put things away and to draw near to God. Remember, uh, Jesus spoke many things to his disciples and towards the end of his life, in the middle of, of, a, um, of speaking of the vine, he says this. He says, now you are clean through the word which, you have, which I have spoken unto you. <clears throat> See, these are the words that they laid, they laid hold of this word. They heard it, and they believed it. They received it, and they kept it. <clears throat> Remember, uh, Jeremiah, the Lord gave Jeremiah um, something to do, a task. He said, go and buy this linen girdle. And then put it on and wear it around. And then later on, the Lord told him to take that and, and hide it. Go, to, um, <clears throat> go out and, and bury it in a rock. So he goes out and then, and then some time passes. And then the Lord tells him to go and get that girdle. And he goes and he finds and behold, it's marred and worthless, useless, good and profitable for nothing. God said this, this evil people, this is the girdle, was Israel and Judah. They were supposed to be a people that he was going to cleave, that were going to cleave to him. This evil people, which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the <clears throat> imagination of their, their hearts and walk after their gods to serve them and to worship them, shall be as the girdle which is good for nothing. <clears throat> this is God's intention, that the whole house of Israel and Judah will cleave to him like a girdle, that they might be unto him a people for a name, for a praise, and for a glory. But they would not hear. So I praise God for the new covenant. 
Now men have been given hearts. <clears throat> They've been given ears. They've been given hearts to hear and receive. Minds to understand. Men will hear the word of the Lord. And the Lord will have for himself this people. <clears throat> I want to conclude with this thought. <clears throat> Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus, Jesus, he's doing a work. He's, he has taken upon him a building project. <clears throat> now, the church, um, a mediocre church, a average church will not do. This will not do. He paid too great a cost. He has invested too many resources. <clears throat> he has sacrificed too much. To get average or okay. The Son of God gave himself for this cause. So in this process, there will be suffering, trial, there will be separations made, there will be pruning and cutting. However, the result is pure gold, a living stone which is fitly framed together with other believers, a vine that now has branches pr uh, producing fruit. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is the result of sanctification and cleansing. Christ will present this to himself. Thank you.